Uh, well, listen, uh, we always talk about a historical thing here in the podcast, and this week, I thought since it's December, we can look back to 19 years ago when Chris Jericho became the first undisputed champion in WWE history. And the undisputed title was only around from December 2001 to September 2002, and then they had the uh, world title and the WWE title. And it felt like this would have been this big moment of, you know, the two titles being combined, and but it just didn't really seem to be as epic as people wanted it to be. I mean, why do you think people don't look back very fondly or, or talk a lot about Vengeance 2001, apart from saying it's the night where Jericho beat Stone Cold and The Rock on the same night? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jericho had a good match with uh, The Rock that night. Well, I think actually just to backtrack, I think it was disappointment after the Invasion uh, Angle storyline ended at Survivor Series, WWF beat The Alliance, then we had like Austin turning face and... You know, Vince was the heel and Austin Vince started again and we almost had this reset and a lot of things went back to the way they had been f prior to the invasion storyline. Um, and I think there was a lot of, you know, a great sense of <laughs> we've seen it before and it was better the first or second time round. There was that sense of familiarity there. Um, and then it just kind of felt like it came from out of nowhere with them deciding to unify the world title, which was held by The Rock, and, and the WWF title, which was held by Steve Austin. So it didn't really seem like there was that much of a setup for it. It came from out of nowhere. So, uh, and also it was only like a four-man, like a four-man tournament on the night, wasn't it, Kenny, at Vengeance that year? It, it was, yeah. It was uh, Jericho against Rock and Austin what? against Kurt Angle. And we yeah. should mention, actually, that Austin had been the heel through to Survivor Series and then randomly turned face the next night and it was a really kind of not very well managed turn so he wasn't really that hot coming at survivor series either yeah absolutely um you know and, and then austin was feuding with vince again and angle had turned heel so you know angle had been the baby face i mean at one point he'd been a member of the alliance and then he left the alliance so i mean that all felt kind of muddled and rushed and hurried and you know, it just seemed like they didn't really have a long-term plan. I mean, they did. It was Hogan, Nash and Hall, but we didn't know that at this point. So it felt like it was something they just came up with to fill the gap and just to give them something to do for the December pay-per-view, uh, which I'm sure is the case. Um, so Jericho beat The Rock at Vengeance. I mean, that was a really good match. Um, Austin beat Angle. I mean, that wasn't particularly memorable. They'd had much better matches earlier in the year, particularly at SummerSlam that year. Um, and then it was Austin versus Jericho in the final, and that was just a you know big, you know colossal disappointment. That match, um, fans weren't really that into it. I don't think people felt that Jericho was in Austin's league. I don't think people really believed that he was going to win. And then he did. Then he did so, and it's like a screwy finish, and Jericho's double champ. Um, and I think it was designed to elevate Jericho into like a true main eventer, which he had never been up until this point in WWF. Um, you know, and I don't think it really worked. Um, because then, especially... then they made, then, then they made Jericho Stephanie's kind of lackey as the champion. Yes. And then he's also, Absolutely. they had they had the two massive belts that you had to carry around both of them at the same time, which just looked weird. Like the whole presentation of it felt like it was every day. It was like, oh God, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Triple H returns, well, he returned before Raw Rumble, didn't he? He returned on, on Raw in January 2002, and that drew that huge yeah. rating. And man, Craig Adam, wasn't it? Drew that huge number. Uh, he'd actually returned on the house shows prior to that, but that was returned to TV. And then he had the, you know, the big performance, the big, big win at Raw Rumble. Um, and then Jericho's with Stephanie. So the feud's really more Stephanie versus Triple H. Um, so Jericho was overshadowed there. Um, and then, of course, at WrestleMania, Hogan and The Rock massively eclipse Triple H and Jericho, which goes on last. And it's a really kind of flat and mediocre match. They just didn't really find the rhythm at all on the night. And, you know, there's a lot of it. Oh, well, you know, it shouldn't, should, Hogan and Rock should have gone on before this. But I mean, the match was just, it wasn't a main event caliber match. So I think all that were were major factors into it really not feeling like a huge success. And Triple H became champ. And didn't he, he dropped the belts pretty quickly to Hogan, didn't he, Kenny? He did. He dropped it at Backlash 2002. Hogan had a 
short run before Undertaker got it with um, when Undertaker gave Hogan arguably the worst choke slam of all time at 2002 <laughs> Judgment Day when Hogan wouldn't go off his feet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Triple H yeah. versus Hogan was, you know, uh, after you watched it, all you could think was, I wish I hadn't seen that. I wish that match had never happened. It would have. It was far better in my imagination than it was in reality. And then, as you say, then Hogan dropped the belts to Undertaker, and it just seemed like they were just like they didn't have a long term plan, and they were just um, you know lurching from one direction to the other uh, without any real sort of focus or um, or battle plan for the future. Um, and then you know they have. Uh, Brock Lesnar becomes champ, right? And then he goes to SmackDown, and then suddenly they create the World Heavyweight title on Raw for Triple H, and we've gone back to two titles. So that was, the whole way it ended was pretty, like a total damp squib as well, wasn't it? It was really flat, and we never really explained properly as to why that happened. You know, what happened to this, you know, unified title? It was just, it just sort of dropped, and then we had this new title created from cloth by Eric Bischoff that was given to Triple H. He didn't beat anyone for it. So, you know, you look back on it, and it's not difficult to really understand why it's not seen as a shining period of WWF struck WWE history. Yeah, it's, it's a weird one because it feels like Austin was so flat after the multiple turns that year, even though the big one at 17 was so epic. They'd kind of yeah. bastardized it by doing so many that year afterwards. Then you had Kurt Angle, who, like you say, had been the babyface, and then all of a sudden he's in Team Alliance, but he's he's actually there to double cross them. So he's back with Team WWF, but then he turns heel the next night. And then you yeah. get Jericho, who they've never really they've never really given Jericho the the kind of we're gonna try and make you a main eventer yet. So he's still kind of recovering from that. The Rock's probably got the most sort of fandom of the four at this point. And then yeah. they give it to Jericho and I mean, nobody, whether it was Austin, Hogan, Rock, nobody could have got over as as the main event guy with the booking that they gave Jericho in that in that time. Like as Stephanie's lackey against Triple H, there was just no way to to you know. With the, there was the infamous segment where Jericho has to you know pick up the dog shit of Stephanie's dog. Yeah. Like, I mean, and so it, it's yeah, it's. I mean, at least Jericho really can say that he. Just at least really Jericho can say that he, he beat um, Austin Rock in one night, but apart from that, it's just very... I can't remember... I don't think I've watched that show back, ever. I think next, this time next year we'll be watching it back for retro, but I've I've never yeah. went back and watched it. Yeah, I, I remember watching the main event um, when I was doing the research for Pro Wrestling Through the Power Slam years, and uh, I always... My memories of it were that it was, that it was a real letdown, and... Uh, you know, my opinion of it, watching it the second time did not change. It absolutely was. Um, and I, you know, I sort of understand, I understand what they were trying to achieve, but it, but it was like, almost like one of those sort of situations, almost like CM Punk really in like 2012, where he was the champ, but he wasn't the main, he wasn't the main event. So Jericho was the double champ, but all these other things were going on and they were clearly, portrayed as more important and thought of um, as more important by the creative team. So Jericho's kind of pushed aside. He's not center stage. He's not front and center representing, you know, he's supposedly representing the company as double champ, but it just feels like he's like a, you know, a secondary player in the Stephanie and Triple H feud, which is precisely what he was. You know, you look back at January, the huge push they did for Triple H's return, he was clearly the star of the show in January um, with his return on Raw and then with the, the Royal Rumble performance. And that was very effective in terms of a, grabbing ratings and as a pay-per-view draw as well. So I'm not saying they made the wrong decision. What I'm saying is that Jericho was not the star of the show. He was very much a supporting player to Triple H. So, I mean, you know, in many ways, he was kind of scuppered from the off, wasn't he? From the very yeah. start, he was he was swimming upstream, as I've said many times before, and we'll probably say again. 
Uh, yeah, I think we can agree Vengeance 2001 was a letdown, but hopefully this podcast has not been a letdown. I know my internet speed has been a big letdown, but hopefully you've enjoyed yourselves uh, watching us or listening to us. So um, that's all the time we've got for this week. Finn, I hope you enjoy your week, whatever you're getting up to. Kenny, I've just got a correction to make from last week. An apology okay. as well. I'd just like to say that Masoni is a luxury Italian brand, not Scottish. How foolish did I feel after last week's recording?